Now, here comes the music. There we go. That's a better view. <laughs> All right. Everyone, it's Buddy. It's Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock. It is time for the DJ Roundtable. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you, but not only just me. I've met DJ Salsa's here as well from beautiful, sunny California, uh, who just got uh, uh, rain, and you sent it our way. We just had your rain for the past couple of days. Thank you very much for the rain. Um, I know you guys had some good amount of rain out there. Thank goodness for that. Got some green lawns, and I know uh, a few a couple of little barbecues that got out of hand got put out from the rain. Thank God for that. Uh, yeah. That right there, you know, we don't want to see anyone, anything happen to anyone anywhere, anytime, especially uh, those families. Uh, my heart goes out to those families who are affected by uh, the fires out there in California and anywhere uh, there's been some fires. Um, hopefully you and your family are safe and hopefully you get to enjoy us here on the DJ Roundtable. Um, if you're watching this today, great, we're live. If you are watching it on the replay on YouTube, well, guess what? You could have watched this over on Twitch. We're live on Twitch on Tuesday nights, 8 p.m. Central Time. That is 9 p.m. East Coast Time. Or you could say 6 p.m. on the West Coast. We're mad as... Well, I'm going to go this way. Mad as that. <laughs> and uh, Matt, I, I know you have a lot of things going on. Are you going to spend a little time with us? I greatly appreciate you have some errands to run. Uh, man is always running. Um, literally always running. Uh, so how was your gig this weekend, sir? It was good. It was, uh, yeah, I, I definitely didn't need the dual 21, but <laughs> it was, uh, much appreciated. I mean, they, the last hour, um, they wanted all like house music and roof is the soul and, um, who else? Nora and pure and like all like deeper kind of, melodic trance house type stuff and uh i mean they loved it and i think having a good sound system like people were just on the dance floor just you know eyes closed just feeling the beat with the with the bass it was just it was perfect uh and they they had a blast so couldn't have asked for a better wedding it was out in the middle of nowhere in the middle of calabasas on a ranch and uh so fully battery powered oh ouch uh, i know matt was saying his battery was low on his phone i guess is oh is he coming back in? There we go. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, no problem. Uh, it was hot and muggy and inside a mansion. Uh, not really a mansion, but a, a big house type thing. And uh, there was all carpet inside, and the dance floor was like on top of carpet, and it was a white carpet. And I'm like, this is gonna get destroyed tonight. And of course it did. Uh, I mean that carpet was a mess at the end of the night. So I don't know. It was odd, but. Uh, there's no air conditioning either, so it was very hot in there. And uh, but it was, you know, they had a great time, and bride and groom loved it, and gave them exactly what they wanted. So no complaints there. And then we had a wedding show on Sunday, and of course our booth looked the best, and we saw the most traffic. We had a corner uh, with storage space behind us, so you know we were able to set up, walk right in, loading dock and everything, set up our our booth, pack all the storage stuff right behind us, and. We were on an end, so our 10 by 10 turned into really like a 12 by 10, uh, which, you know, this company doesn't really say anything. It's at a huge, huge fairground expo hall. So uh, had the floral backdrop. People loved that. Uh, I think more people like were interested in the they didn't know that like we DJ because like you see this floral. Back <laughs> we keep losing Matt, I guess either his signal's really weak or. <laughs> Is your your battery cutting out? Is my, dying my connection. Or... I don't know. I, I I thought I had good LTE. Yeah. Uh, yeah, your signal's really uh, weak because I see you, you're you're like frozen. So, do you want to uh, run your errand and come back in a little bit later? Uh, let's see. Let me let me see if I can. Let me move my car here to the where I can get Wi-Fi. See. Move the uh, see if we can DJ Salsa's mobile. Move the move the top. Yeah, let me see because the, the, the gym on has Wi-Fi, so let me see if I can. <laughs> yeah, the whip game. 
You gotta have a strong whip game. Let's see. Maybe this will be better. I, I, I yeah, where I that. live is like a bunch of mountains. Yeah, you you kind of live in the hills of uh, in the SoCal area. Yeah, and I have a I have a, my iPhone 13 Pro, which uh, is great, uh, except it's T-Mobile, and T-Mobile built their network not to be able to take the iPhone 13 Pro with the antenna when they built their 5G. So uh, when I get my 14 on Friday, then I'll have better signal and 5G everywhere. But right now I have it disabled, so all I get is LTE. So anyway, uh, but yeah, the wedding, wedding show went great. No, never, never. I got Samsung. Never. No problem. I, I don't want. I don't want. I don't want my pictures of my weddings to turn out like the ones you have. <laughs> Too oh. blurry. Oh. <laughs> they turned out pretty uh, well. I'm not a professional photographer. Eh, I don't know. I think you just can't zoom in. That's the problem. Uh, I can zoom like, in. I mean, it's it's a. Yeah, I don't know. Tracy that that digital. Lot, Tracy takes a lot of pictures of her phone. She has the um, uh, the Samsung Flip. I don't think it has a nice of a camera as I have. I actually have a twenty, so you know, two years old. And this is the uh, the top of the one with the better lenses. It takes mm. it takes better pictures for zoom because it actually has a separate zoom lens. Her phone uh. does not have a separate zoom lens, and she's got the third generation. The fourth generation just came out. Same thing, you know, a little better camera, but. I noticed, you know, like zoomed in pictures are not as they're digital zoomed or not optical zoom. So it, it's, it's, it's cell phone pictures. It's not, but I was taking pictures with like, you know, the photographers take with like a Canon or Sony right. or Nikon and run a mirrorless system. And I would have a phenomenal picture, but mm-hmm. uh, you know, it is what it is. You can, you can keep your iPhone. I'm getting the new one on Friday. Well, yeah, there you go. Was, woke up at 5 a.m. last Friday and got my order in. Uh, so it should be should be here by the time I get back from my gig on Friday. Well, there you go. And I'm a T-Mobile customer too, so uh, it is a uh, it, it's it, it they do have pretty good service. I I originally was a Nextel customer, then Sprint customer, now T-Mobile customer. So mm. there you go. Um, yeah. so. You took, I, I know, Dual 21 with you, and they had 100 people. Um, you had, uh, you said you had a real good EDM set. The people were there, um, and people were hot and tired and sweaty afterwards, which is always good. And I know you guys were battling the heat. So let me ask you this one. When you're dealing with high heat like you guys have been, and I know talked to a few DJs out there, um some of the djs uh one uh one of the djs actually had a wedding uh it was 115 degrees where his wedding was at um in a little more arid area on the la kind of area and one of the things i have to ask is how do you uh, deal with the heat how do you, what do you do to overcome that heat especially in a building that's not air conditioning you want people to dance uh i mean when i'm setting up uh and walking around i have a neck fan which is like a pair of headphone type thing that goes around your neck and blows cold air up on your face and it's got battery powered godsend uh it was like 25 bucks on amazon um but then like i have like a, a forced air carpet like fan uh the one that you see everybody have from stanley or whatever other company and uh i put that like by my feet on my booth and just keep it on me the whole night but uh keeping the guests cool that's that's not my problem uh but i try to keep myself cool with that fan i just i thought i didn't know there wasn't gonna be air conditioning at this one they told me it was inside in a mansion i figure okay well there's it's a mansion there's got to be air conditioning so what am i gonna worry about well certainly was not um so uh yeah but normally i mean i a few venues that like i repeat at i always tell the customers i'm like you gotta like go to Home Depot, get some of those big industrial grade fans that you could put on the ground or on a stand. I mean, it works wonders because if people are hot on a dance floor, where, where are they going to go outside where it's a little cooler? So um, that's kind of the, the, the thing. And then this venue was a little different. Like the bar was outside and to the right. 
So in a whole different room that you couldn't get to from the dance floor. So people had to go outside to get to the bar. So made it a little, a little trickier, um, you know, if they wanted to grab drinks, but I think the bar closed at like nine 30 and then, you know, we just played the house music set from nine 30 to 10 30 and sent them off with a good song after that. So I don't know. It's, we had that and then we had a little bit of rain during the ceremony, but I was able to put my, my Mackie under a tree kind of far away. And then I have the, the Sennheiser mic. So obviously the range wasn't a problem. It was probably close to about 300 feet away, but with those, with those half wave antennas, you can go, I mean, I've never had a drop out with those far, even I've gone far, far. And that's, that's so. one of the things having the right equipment. Um, mm. And then you run a, you run a Mac? uh for ceremony or for no for for reception yeah so i have a i have a 2011 macbook pro which is the last year that they made the best macbook pro ever which mine has a i upgraded it to a terabyte hard drive it has 16 gigs of ram and it's got an i7 chip in it so i mean the thing's a beast but it was like the last year that they put like really good fans in it my my macbook has never overheated never frozen while I've DJed software has never crashed, uh, never any problems. And I've been in like direct sunlight with it. So, uh, I think that's a testament to the, and my mixer is never, I mean, that's, that's the other reason, like I like the, the like plasticky mixer. Like I don't use a pioneer mixer or a powered, I guess my last one was a powered mixer, but this one's a, uh, the Hercules uses USB, but, uh, you know, it's, it's plasticky gold, so it doesn't get too hot and, you know, I've been fortunate enough to where I don't really need an umbrella, but it's nice to have one. And but. that's one of the things that I know some of the people, I, I don't run Mac. I run uh, gaming computers. Uh, mm -hmm. I like PC more than Mac. And again, you have, you, you like your Apple stuff. You like your tablets and phones. And again, everybody likes their personal thing. I'm not saying Mac is better than PC. It's just, I hear about the guys running the newer Macs. Yeah, at the older yep. Max, the newer Max with the M1 and M2 chips, running mm -hmm. the problems of overheating. Yep, I like the gaming computers, and like my main computer right now is a um, custom built one um, from Zandia Computers, and they like the ASUS ones I have, Republic Gamer. They have huge fans on them. I sitting there a lot of times you know turning on the computer on and tracy will go that sounds like a jet plane ready to take off yes it's doing what it needs to do to keep itself cool and regulate temperature so it is going to be loud for a set you know for whatever time it is if it gets hot it's going to run those fans up higher which i much rather have it do that and run cool than overheat now ceremonies i usually use a tablet and um I don't run into too much problems with tablets overheating. What I run into over problems with overheating uh, that I've seen, and I, I've not run into too much, is speakers, amplifiers and speakers, you know, getting hot and stuff like that. I try to make sure that we're covered as much as possible. Uh, the next two weddings I have, uh, both are at the same location, both in the ceremonies outside. Um, very easy, simple. We roll in, set up, you know, a speaker and basically our our wedding ceremony set up, you know, takes 15, 20 minutes to set up There's our wedding ceremony set up and we're ready to rock and roll. It's very easy to do with, especially with the tablet. Um, I use DJ on the tablet and it's it's very easy, simple to deal with. It's uh, a very nice, very uh, pr uh, basic program for DJing. Um, I, I paid for the upgraded, you know, I think it's like four or five bucks through uh, through uh, the Play Store. But it's one of the things I try to do things to avoid running the problems with overheating, especially with computers. And I've always used gaming computers if I need to use a computer for something. And the reason why is that I want to make sure that it's uh, as cool as possible. It has as much air as possible blown across it. Um, I just don't want to run into a situation or running into stuff overheating. And I'm glad that your Mac's an older Mac that actually has fans in it. Cause I think I, I, I want to say the MacBook, I might be wrong. I'm not a Mac person. So that's why I'm, I'm saying, I think the MacBook air, they don't have fans on it. They just have radiated uh, cooling. 
because it's all yeah. still really, really super thin. And I see guys run MacBook Airs versus MacBook Pros. And I think the Pros have a fan and the Airs don't. If, I, if, I'm, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And someone wants to correct me down in the comment area, please tell me, uh, hey, you're wrong. <laughs> um, again, I don't own Mac, so I, I'm not 100% sure. But that's what I get the gist of it, talk, listen to people talk about their computers. Uh, but when you run into a situation with a computer and anything overheating, how do you compensate for that? How do you, again, you guys have had 115 degrees, 100 degree, 105 degree temperatures, some good humidity. We get hot days here in Chicago. You know, we get 100 degree days, uh, you know, during the summertime and we have people want to have outdoor weddings and, you know, even 90 degrees with, you know, 85% humidity and, you know, you get, you know, 95, 100 degrees with 95% humidity. It's very hard to, you know, you got to go outside and do stuff. But how do you compensate for that? How do you compensate? To, you know, again, I know you're talking about how you run the the the, um, the neck unit to keep yourself cool. You run box fan, you know, big heavy fans to keep yourself cool, keep your equipment cool. But is there any, is there any other little trick that you can give that you use that you feel gives you a leg up on the heat? Uh, I think, I mean, not my laptops never overheat, but my, I, I worry more about like my iPad that I run for ceremony. So what I'll do is, um, I'll kind of see wherever direction the sun is and use my Sennheiser, like mic box as like a, a shade. So I'll like put it up in front of the receiver or in front of the, where the iPad's going to be sitting and shade the iPad that way. Or if I can't do that, then I'll just put my little iPad case on top of the iPad. So it's not being directly beamed with sunlight. Cause one time, uh, way back when I think in 2016 I did a wedding and it was so hot in the ceremony and my iPad was exposed to direct sunlight that like right after they did the bridal party processional the song just like suddenly stopped and luckily it was before the bride had started walking so it wasn't a big deal uh and I was able to just plug my phone right in instead but I was like yeah I'd never had my iPad overheat before because I you know wasn't really big on the iPads back then but um yeah, so I always make sure that my iPad is shaded and like the Sennheiser box because I don't I, I don't want to leave that in direct sunlight either, the receiver. So uh, those are my only tips. I've heard of other DJs use like dry ice underneath their laptop on like a tray. Uh, like if you have one of the sliding tray coffin type style. Uh, I don't know what that would do because um, that's also like CO2 that you're... Uh, so, yeah, CO2 that you're like emitting, which... I don't think that that's, I don't, I don't know how that helps for the laptop, but I guess if it's a cool platform underneath, then that helps. But I, I, what I used to do that helped me a lot. I had a, uh, a, uh, what do you call it? Um, like a fan system that would go underneath my MacBook pro. Uh, and that was, that was my though. Like when I, when I had to get a, a 17 inch MacBook pro, it was a 2010 model and that one would overheat cause it was old and it wasn't as good. And, uh, that one I used to, I had a, had to have a cooling pad because if I didn't, when I was running my DJ software, it would get a little glitchy. Like you would see, like the song wouldn't start exactly when you hit the cue point. And, uh, so finally when I put the, the cooling pad underneath it, the fan system, it worked fine. So, uh, don't have to do that with the one I have now, but I, I also keep it elevated. I used to also DJ with my MacBook directly on a carpeted table, which, you know, the Odyssey carpeted table, which doesn't help either. Uh, now I use a laptop stand. Yeah, one again, I try to you know keep as much stuff you know, around mine to keep it cool as possible, and try as much airflow as possible around it. The dry ice thing is interesting. You know, CO two, you know, dry ice, you know, car, uh, carbon dioxide. Uh, you're just displacing oxygen. It's, it's inert gas. It's not going to hurt anything. You know, it's part of the atmosphere. Um, it's really not going to hurt anything. So it, it you know, it turned back into a gas. If it's a cool gas being drawn into the computer, but through the fan, it's helping to it keep it cool. Um, it's not going to hurt anything. It, there's no moisture to it. The only thing is I look at is that, you know, keeping something like that on dry ice is the expense of dry ice. It's also the, uh, what happens the gig is over. You have a half hour wedding. You're out there for an hour total. You still have a ton of dry ice. Yeah, you can just throw it on the ground. It's going to, you know, evaporate and turn back into gas, back into the atmosphere. But it's kind of a, a waste of uh, of money. So I look at you know being you know proactive with cooling. 
but also I look at um, uh, I, I I look at where we're at and trying to be again in shaded areas or in protected areas as much as possible for ceremony. So it, it's one of the things that we as DJs always want to make sure we protect our equipment and protect our gear because it's it's, it's expensive. Um, going on to the next thing uh, I want to talk about is. Uh, this weekend I got to play with my Astera lights and we were talking a little bit before we started the show uh, about the lights and I, I showed you a little bit of video uh, of the lights and uh, some of the cool effects it was doing and uh, the video I have uh, for the gig log it will be out tomorrow on uh, YouTube and uh, or if you're watching this later on it's already on YouTube whichever way you look at it <laughs> uh, the light uh, cast onto the people I I like how it is. The I think I would like to get two more sticks of light. And I'd like to um possibly um I also want to get the the wireless controller for it. I, I possibly want to get two more lights and get the I I definitely want to get the controller because the remote control does a good amount of stuff. I had uh the video I showed you, which is also in the gig log is the last dance of the night. And I had two sticks on what they call fire mode. And I had the lower sticks, uh, I had lower sticks on ice mode. And mm -hmm. those right there um, give a great like fire and ice kind of look. And they have white and yellow and amber and all the cast all these new cool colors. But I feel that uh, the app, which you can have on your phone or a tablet, it does so much more than that i wonder where do you think dance light's going to go i know you we were talking a little bit about you know lighting and you always feel you need to have control of your lighting where do you feel dance lights are going to go in, in that too distant future do you feel they're going to give you more control or do you feel that they're going to have uh i know um uh, uh aaron the dj was talking about this cubby come out with a box you basically plug in your DMX line into, and yeah. it, it controls it via AI. I see. Uh, there's no way that an AI system will ever be as good as manual triggering. That's just that's my two cents. Um, you see the Ape Labs do it. You see other sound active. It's just it looks bad because these the lighting has to be executed a certain way for each song. So, um, you know, unless you pre-program everything ahead of time, sure, you can have movements and sure, it can react to the bass or cre react to whatever frequency, but there's there's no way that, like, I mean, I drove fast, fast, slow, slow, fast, slow, like, certain patterns. And then, you know, when it's, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of, like, a good example. Like, uh, uh like uptown funk you up when it's uptown funk you up like you know i do the like white 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 like it there's just there's no way for an AI system to be that that precise or accurate um, oh, oh, so like it could set scenes too. like I i'm sure it could too. set it could yeah it could like set up uh you know presets and stuff but that's the thing i Travis was talking to me about it. Uh, he invested in one of those like AI light shows that he saw at the expo. And uh, I told him, yeah, you know, let me, let me know how it works. But you know, I, I don't know the, the, the whole thing with lighting is you have to add fixtures uh, and then each fixture has its own set of DMX protocol and, you know, a strobe rate of 25 or 200 and you know, 200 flashes a second might look different on this light. Like it might be, you know, a DMX value of 230, but on another light, it's 240. So um, that's why, like, my my box, like, my par lights and my up lights, they have the exact same motherboard. So that way, like, when I'm strobing, everything strobes at the same rate. Um, because if, if you try to add in other lights, there's a lot of pre-programming ahead of time where you have to get that strobe rate to be exactly the same on each light so that it all strobes at the same rate. Uh, well, so it's, it's, if an AI system can yeah. do that, then <laughs> sure. But, you know. And that's the thing, keeping everything the same brand and having the same brand throughout instead of versus having four or five different brands of lights. And 
even in, within the same manufacturer, you can have Chave or America DJ or Rockville or uh, some of the other light companies that are out there, uh, sheds and so forth and so on. But even with the same light, and I've seen this before and I've run into this before, even the same light from the same manufacturer, uh, one was built, this one and this one was built uh, like a couple weeks later and they have a new upgraded chip or new upgraded board and it's slightly different than the first one. And that is, you know, take a look at your equipment and see what you have and trying to fix workarounds mm -hmm. and trying to compensate so everything it looks consistent throughout for doing lighting. Uh, DMX lighting, you know, depends on what you're running. I know Matt has his favorite software that he loves. He is a down pat, you know. Um, I played with Show Express. Uh, I like Show Express how it does things. Uh, the Astera software, uh, the app, it, it, it's pretty cool. I Again, I, I want to get that controller so I can do stuff with it because doing stuff on the app is one thing, but actually seeing it do things, you're like, ooh, it, it's fun. And I know my next wedding coming up on the 1st of October, I, they have my plat package, um, just like uh, wedding, the past two weddings have. And I am DMXing the, the, the moving heads in that one because I want to do so much with the moving heads. So those ones I'm, I'm going to DMX, I'm going to do, I'm going to do some cr uh, fun stuff with them. Um, but I know you got some, something to do. You got to run off to it. Matt, thank you so much for stopping by and coming in tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, hope to have you back here again next week. As always, I know you're always got stuff going on. And uh, again, I wish you good luck with this coming weekend, your gigs this weekend and keep cool and uh, stay safe. brother. <laughs> You too. Send me send me some videos of those Asteras on Instagram if you can. Oh, I, yeah, I, I I will I will I got I why don't I get the uh, app? I want mean, to I get the uh, uh, the transmitter. Um, I'm gonna be playing with them. I will I will take some video and I will definitely send them to you and see what you can do and maybe we can do a little private uh, video chat on there. I can when you're available and we can do some stuff and play around with them together and see what you think. Sounds good. All right, see you later, man. All right, you have a good week. Take it easy. To. Again, Matt with D DJ Salsis. If you have not done so already, please go to his social media. Uh, he has on Instagram. He has on uh, YouTube. His YouTube channel, of course, just like I do. My YouTube channel is TBM Productions DJ One. He's DJ Salsis on everything. I uh, am also on Instagram at Your Wedding DJ One. So if you want to see pictures and photos, uh, please. Uh, you know, follow us on our social media, follow us on YouTube. And if you're watching us on YouTube, on watchers on Twitch on the original broadcasts, which is you know, every Tuesday at eight o'clock. Um, I always have different DJs, you know, it all boils down when people are, are not busy. A lot of people have gigs going on, family things going on. And that's the thing about this. The show is about you as a DJ and about everyone else as a DJ. I want to make sure that we're giving information out, telling what we're doing and hopefully sharing the information with you and saying, hey, this is how we overcome things. This is how we do things, especially the cooling thing. I know in California had a big heat wave for quite a while. Um, we've been OK, but uh, next week can be really warm here in Chicago. And then, you know, before you know it, it's October and we're in the, the, the 60s and the 50s and 40s. You know, it, it's it's that fun time of year where one day you have it, you know, 80 degrees, the following day it's 60 degrees. So uh, at least that's how it goes here in Chicago. You can have all four uh, seasons in one day in Chicago. It, it happens that way sometimes. But it's being prepared for those things, especially with the heat. And we still have uh, some heat going on in places. Uh, but also you have to get ready for the cold too. And it, it is one of the things that, Cooling too much can be a bad thing in the in the cool because your computer can get too cold uh, as far as touching it. You know, screens free, uh, start going, batteries get cold, so forth, so on. So it's also making sure that you have stuff that is warm. And uh, there, there's DJs I've talked to about that. I've had to do stuff in cold weather, and, uh, and they've done a bunch of different things to overcome that cold weather. And it, it's always great to hear about how people engineer things and people figure things out uh, to work around those problems. And like I said before, the, um, I'm going to go back to the Astera lights. The Astera lights, 
I'm very, very, very impressed with them. Uh, one of the things I found out about the Astera lights is that they will uh, have an alarm on them. If you send, there's an alarm, you get, if you get the uh, the transmitter, wireless transmitter, and you on the app, you can set an alarm on. So if someone moves the light, it'll start flashing red and make sounds. And this way, if someone grabs a light and wants to walk away with a light, which uh, it hadn't happened to me, but I'm, it has happened to other DJs. I was talking to a company that actually deals with Astera, and they were saying a DJ had um, an event, and uh, kids were taking the lights, the smaller, they were small little square lights, kind of like um, the, the shoddy pin spots, uh, small little lights, um, and they're like, you know, 400 bucks, 500 bucks a light, and they were taking these lights, and they were putting their backpacks and all of a sudden they were in the bathroom and the lights were flashing red and making noises. And somebody came along and told the, the DJ, hey, you got, you, there's a bunch of lights in there making noise in the bathroom. And he went in there and found that these kids had the lights in the bathroom that they were taking. They're like, oh, look, I could take these lights or, you know, a small little light I could put in my backpack. And the thing is that they're not thinking that this is a, you know, five, six, seven hundred dollar light. They just see a cool little light and they have no way of charging. They have no idea, no idea how to do anything with it. And, you know, it, it's one of the things that it, it's kind of sad that the kids think it's okay to grab when it's wrong, but people do that. People, drunk people do dumb things all the time at weddings. And if you're a DJ and you've done a wedding or at a bar or at a party, sometimes you see people who have, you know, a lot of alcohol decide to do something crazy. And, you have to do a couple of things. You have to make sure that, you know, your safety is, is first and foremost, but also you want to, you have to make sure you protect your equipment. We invest a lot of money in our gear. We don't want stuff spilled. We want stuff, you know, damaged. We don't want stuff destroyed. Even the wedding I did this past uh, weekend, uh, Saturday, we had a ceremony uh, in the main hall and then cocktail in a hallway. And when I say hallway, it's a big, giant hallway. Um, and then we had reception back in the main room. They have flipped the room. So they put people out the hallway and then back in the room. Well, in, during cocktail hour, um, I had my black J8s outside. We, it was a 225-person wedding. So the Maui 5 goes for ceremony were great. But I felt for cocktail, we need a little more oomph, a little more power, just like in the main room. The JH, they covered, they sound phenomenal in the main room, not probably 225 people. Um, they, uh, the, as far as the JHs, sound phenomenal in the hallway. Nice little punch, little bass, the 12 inch. I, I turned the bass down on it because it was cocktail hour, uh, just so it wasn't overbearing so people could have conversations. Uh, I'm not trying to be overly loud. Uh, but I did get a compliment for it uh, from the bride uh, saying that people were coming into the, um, they're in the bridal, bridal room, bridal suite, uh, trying to, uh, you know, decompress from everything that was going on. They wanted to spend some time in there uh, before the reception. And people were coming in there telling that the party's lit and people were out there, you know, dancing and having fun, which I appreciate and I, I really do enjoy that. And it, it just, uh, why I want people to do. I want people to have fun at the cocktail hour as well as reception and so forth. But sometimes people have too much fun. And one of the things I ran into was I looked over and there's this woman, she puts in her glass, empty glass, but still has ice in it, has, you know, fruit because it's some kind of mixed drink or whatever it is, and puts it down on top of the base of the J8, which is where the subwoofer's at. And I'm seeing it vibrate. And I'm like, I, I I go over and I go, no, oh, hold on, hold on. I, I go, I go, no, no, you can't do that. I go, I go cry and grab the glass. She grabs it. She goes, oh, I'm sorry. She grab, picks it up. And I'm like, oh, okay, thank God. Cause I, I don't want it spilling and getting whatever liquor and especially ice is water. Uh, alcohol, you know, it's only a, a certain percentage of the liquor, but I don't want that on my speaker. I don't want to damage my speaker. I don't want to damage my equipment, but people think it's okay I, I have run into it with subwoofers people put stuff on top of subwoofers drinks and it's like you do know that's 
bass coming out of there and it's vibrating and the drink's going th like this. But people don't think about that because they're like, you know, oh, look, it's a table. Oh, look, it's something I can put something on. And it's one of the things that we want to protect our investment. We want to uh, look at and do things and protect stuff. Um, one other thing I'll also talk about investment. And I'm actually going to do a little shout out uh, to a company I actually found online. Uh, I have white J8s and... I have uh, black J8s on RCF, and I went looking for white speaker cables, and I found this company. They're based in California called Sari, uh, or, uh, Sari Speakers, right? Or Sari Cables. Sari Cables, I'm sorry. Sari Cables, S-O-R-R-Y, just like saying Sari. They have a little ghost insignia, uh, Sari Cables. Um, so you can see there it says sorry, and they have whoop, looks like a little unhappy face because they are sorry. They sent me a little ghost, they sent me some stickers too, and they also sent me the cables. Now I have white, and I don't know if you can see they're not too much in the camera, but it's not pure white, it's actually like a braided white uh cable, and these are for the tops to the bottoms. And of course, you know, we'll use cable ties and we have uh, uh, stuff to make sure they're secure. But you can see that they're braided and they feel really super nice. You know, they have, uh, as their website says, they use the most premium parts they could find and they have their own strap. You know, nice heavy ends, nice heavy lockers. You know, they're using name brand stuff. Uh, so, if you guys are looking for some cables, they're not cheap, but you have a white setup and you need to have white cables for something, they have white cables. They have something that a lot of people don't have. I got ordered three cables, you know, two and a spare. So I got three cables here. And uh, I want to thank Sorry Cables for having it. And I'm very impressed with everything I've been looking at under stuff. Um, I'll be using these in a couple of weeks and I will give a progress report on how well they work um, then and kind of a little bit of a, a little bit of a product review. Uh, but sorry cables. And again, they have this the sad little face on the little ghost is their insignia. Uh, they're based in California uh, and they custom make cables and they, they have tons of different lengths. Again, they're not cheap, but you know, good quality stuff never is cheap. I much rather spend, you know, I much whoa, wow, focus. There we go. I much rather spend, you know, thirty, forty, fifty dollars for a cable that is going to last uh, quite a while versus have to replace it all the time or it sounds horrible. You know, it has a bunch of static or a whole bunch of noise on it, and you don't want that. So again, sorry, cables. White speak on cables for power because that's how the JH you they power the top from this bottom. Um, I got six foot cables which you have a little bit of slack, not much. And uh, I'll you know use I have my 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 special ties I have to connect everything. I'll run those and make sure everything's all tied down, and everything's all white, and it just looks all nice and clean. Um, other than that. Uh, I don't think that's about it. We're going to do a short uh, episode this week. So again, if you're watching this on YouTube, and I got special my special guest of my uh, pucker coming here. You probably saw her tail. Uh, <laughs> if you're watching this on YouTube, again, we do this live on Twitch on Tuesday nights, eight o'clock Central Time. That's six o'clock Pacific, nine o'clock Eastern Time, seven o'clock Mountain Time, um, at, in the U.S. You're watching this overseas. Hey, thank you very much. I appreciate you guys watching and tuning in and watching the show. And the reason why I want people here live because of the fact that I, I have a chat. You guys can ask questions and we want to answer those questions. Or if it's just me, I will answer the questions. But, you know, I, I'm very grateful for the people who come on to the show and share their information, share their experiences and share what they do with everyone else. And that's what it's all about, sharing the information 
and making us all better as DJs. I want to see DJs be successful. I want to see DJs do good things. I don't want to hear when I go to a venue all the horror stories. And there again, there's always me bad people who do dumb things in our industry. And those people right there, you know, we want them like every industry, we want those people to be the outliers, not the everybody looks at it and goes, oh, every DJ does that. We don't want to do that. We want to make sure that we do the right things and take care of our clients, our customers, their friends, their family, their guests, and do the right thing for them. So with that said, I appreciate you guys all. Again, follow us on Instagram. It's at your wedding DJ one. If you are on YouTube, it's TBM Productions DJ one. If you're on Twitch, it's TBM Productions underscore buddy on twitch.tv. Make sure you tune in next week. Again, we'll be here Tuesday night, and we'll see who uh, comes in. Because, again, I have a lot of DJs, a lot of people, and we're going to have some other guests coming here, too, other than DJs, and talk about some stuff that, like, you know, us as DJs, how can we do better for things, and how can we uh, partner with, you know, other vendors? And that's, that's part of the thing is it's not grow your network, not just other DJs, but also to other vendors because it, it, it's a teamwork, and work with that those other vendors. It's great. So other than that, guys, you guys have a good night. Be safe. And we'll see you guys next week.